So we get into the we get into the short rows on our little Bible study here that we've been going through. We're on page uh, we, we stopped midways on page eighty three, but I'm going to back up just a little bit. Want to read the, the scripture uh, before the one we finished with last week. And just kind of look back through it. Second Peter chapter three, verse one through nine. This whole chapter, chapter three, it's it's not a long chapter. I encourage you to read it. Uh, about hope for, for growing Christians it is how it's titled here and, and that, that group of scripture, scriptures being put together. And this is a beware. We just read through the scripture and, and just, just a quick discussion on it. Verses 1 through 9. This second epistle. Uh -oh. Yeah, chapter 3. The second epistle. I'm, I'm, it's going to be look a little different out of the book. I'm reading out of King James here. Beloved, I now write unto you. In both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before in the past by holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers. People are going to try to come in and cause issues with the word. Walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming. You know, people will say, oh my gosh, we've been hearing this story for thousands of years and ain't nothing happened yet. That's what he's talking about. They're going to scoff at the word. For since the fathers fell asleep or died, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Said, man, it's just another day. For this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in the store, in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack. We, we, excuse me, we defined that word last Sunday night. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise as some men count slackness, but long is long-suffering, thank goodness, to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, which that in itself throws out the fact that the Lord died for everybody and everybody's going to go to heaven. That is not biblical at all. But He died that, that so all have an opportunity and that's his will. You know, his will is, is that nobody, he doesn't want anybody to go to hell. So uh, just a quick note, Jesus is waiting so that more sinners will repent and turn to him. We must not sit and wait for him, but live in the realization that time is short and we have important work to do. Be ready to meet him anytime, at any time, even today. We plan your course of service as if... Uh, you know, he, he's not going to return for many years, but, you know, live and know that he could. We do not know the time. We talked about that just a little bit. You know, I know people that have tried to go through and, you know, numbers are really important in the scripture. There are a lot of very, very significant numbers in the scripture. And, uh, you know, the one, the three, the seven, the, the 70, seven times seven, 70 times seven, all those are very significant numbers. But you ain't going to figure out when the Lord's coming back. But I know people that think they got that figured out. They are foolish. They are foolish and they are ignorant to the scripture itself is what they are. They try I mean, Jesus said in his fleshly, you know, when he lived on earth physically, he said, I don't even know right now. Because he had limitations at that point. I mean, he could not be everywhere at once. He, there was, there was limitations that he had because he was fully God yet fully man. And, and so it, just, it blows me away when he, even churches, you know, you might remember 1999. Boy, I mean, churches were saying that is, this is it. 2000 is it. And, 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 and they were. But, you know, it, it didn't happen, did it? Yeah, you know, because the Bible says that nobody knows. And, and then all the time stuff, that don't mean anything to the Lord. So we just need to remember that. And I, I want to read the little, the little application for today. Good little story. Grandma found her young grandson sitting on the front porch with silent tears streaming, streaming down his face. What's wrong? She asked gently, pulling him closer to her. I don't want Jesus to come today, the little boy said. The family had just finished Sunday lunch, and much of the conversation had been about their pastor's sermon on the second coming of Christ. You know, I've heard some people say, don't go home and have Baptist preacher for lunch. 
But uh, they were talking about the second coming. Various family members uh, had eagerly and joyously shared how much better they thought the world would be after Jesus returned to establish his kingdom. Why don't you want Jesus to come today, Grandma asked softly. Because Daddy said he's going to take me to the city to see a baseball game next Saturday. And I don't want to miss it. And, and you know, we, we think, well, oh, that's, you know, that's, that's what a kid would do. But, but how often do we just slap, put off God to go do something else? That, 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 it, it's obvious that, that the Lord is not that important to us. And yet we try to convince others. We try to convince our kids but they see, they see something that's totally different. It does not match up. It does not add up. I had a conversation standing outside the dollar store today. You know, that, that uh, everybody's convinced, you know, that, that the athletic program is convinced. If you don't play travel ball, your kid will never get a scholarship. Your kid will never get recognition. And I'm willing to bet, I don't know the statistic, but somebody can go look it up, but I'm willing to bet the number of scholarships there's no significant, no statistical increase in change, I bet you, if you go back and look prior to travel ball being a thing. But there's a lot less money in people's accounts, I can promise you that, because they spend $50,000, $100,000 a year. And, and, and not, I ain't saying anything against sports, but when you put sports ahead of God, yeah. when you put sports ahead of your worship, I got a problem with that, so does God. But I don't really matter. You know, it's like somebody, we were sitting over here and after the church, uh, the, the funeral, we're feeding the family, and somebody said a cuss word, oh, I'm sorry, preacher. I'm trying to, I'm not the one you need to worry about. You know, don't, don't worry about me. Lord knows it all. But a lot of times that's how we, we are. We think we can act one way here, and then it's okay to act another way out there on the job. And I, I, it don't work that way, folks. But, but do we live in a way that shows others that example of how we uh, should act. So, you know, the little kid here. And then it goes into some questions. What, what would be good about Christ's return today? You know, some things, these are more thought-provoking. I'm not really looking for, for answers out loud. What, what might be the downside? And, and the downside is i got family members that are lost and on their way to hell. Yeah. On their way to hell. That's the downside. And see, that, that is, you know, that, that is what the Lord's waiting on. And, and, you know, we ought to be asking, Lord, I know you can come back at any, at any time. But, but give me one more opportunity to talk to Uncle Joe. Give me one more opportunity to talk to my mama. Give me one more opportunity. And that's the things that we really need to be worried about. Say, man, I can't wait to get to next month. I'm going to get a raise. You know, we're worried about so many things that have no eternal value whatsoever. I mean, what is the Lord going to do with gold? We're going to walk on it. Yeah. It don't mean a thing to him. It's just going to be pavement. So a lot of things just to think about there. Are you still hoping and believing that, that a person will make a decision for Christ? And, and, you know, you cannot make anybody make a decision. You need to plant seeds, and then every now and then you need to go by there and put a little water on it. Don't, don't just let it go. Do, do we need to reconcile with or, or forgive someone before Christ returns? Because when you ain't forgiving somebody... I don't care how many times you come to church a week, you're sinning. When you are withholding forgiveness, that is a sin. So just some things to think about. So even as adults, even us adults put so much above and ahead of the Lord, and yet we think we could justify it. And a lot of people think they can justify it. So I don't want to hear that. I'm there nearly every time the door is open, and it's fine if I skip this weekend. You know, we have that mentality. We think we have some entitlement. Now I understand people work and, and you, make, you take trips. I'm not saying anything against those things. But we get that entitlement mentality sometimes, even those that are in the church regular. And, and, and we, you know, somebody, you know, and you'll genuinely be saying, man, I missed y'all. Well, I'm there all the time, you know. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I was just literally telling you I missed you. That's all. Because if I don't tell him, you didn't even say that night come church the other day. I bet you didn't even notice I wasn't here. You know? I mean, it's just one or the other. It's, it's, it's funny. That's the funny things about being a pastor, right, brother? <laughs> but anyhow, supplementary scriptures to consider. If you would look at uh, 2 Peter there, chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. And again, a reminder that you ain't going to figure out when the Lord's coming back. I don't care what your pastor says. I don't care what your TV preacher has told you. I don't care what book you've read. The Bible says 
But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Total and absolute surprise. If everybody knew the thief was coming, he'd never break in because you'd be ready. You'd be sitting there. Oh, gotcha. I knew you was coming, so I'm sitting there. You don't know when the Lord's coming, so you need to be serving Him. You need to be thinking when you're laying around doing something sinful. Would you want Him to catch you in the very act when He comes back? I mean, that, that's what they tried to pull on that lady, right? And all they were trying to do was cover up their sins. We caught her in a very act of adultery. And, and, of course, they broke laws and all kinds of stuff. As a thief in the night, the Bible says. And in, in, in the night. Think about that. Where's most bad stuff happen? In the night. Of course, we get more blatant and blatant about it right now. Do y'all realize we talked about it in our Sunday school class this morning? Maryland. See, there's, it's, it's a great thing that federally... Uh, it did not pass the Women's Health Act, which is garbage, is a lie, that all that was was to pass full-term abortion. And that was pushed back out to the states, which can be a good thing. Maryland, it passed almost two to one in the House and Senate stuff. It, if, it's got to go one more step, and, and if it passes that, it goes to public vote. And, and most likely it will pass. In the state of Maryland, you'll be able to kill your baby within 20 days of birth. 28 days. Legally. And there will be nothing that the law can do to you. Nothing. Cannot be considered murder. Cannot can be considered abuse. You can throw that baby on the table and let them starve to death, freeze to death, suffocate to death. Right here in the United States, you tell me we ain't immoral, ungodly, unethical. Why do you think God has just turned his head and so much is going south in our nation? Because we're going south. Right here in Maryland. And I don't know what other states. I just That was just posted, I think, this past week. And they went, it's going to go to public vote. But when they went to before to, to as a state to embrace abortion, it passed overwhelmingly. Uh, but in, in the, I don't remember if it's the House or Senate, but it, it was like 60-something to 30 votes or 40-something to 20 votes or something like that to, to pass through that first stage. You know, it's got to go through the House, got to go through the Senate. And then it goes to public vote. We need to be praying for Maryland and the public leaders that call themselves public servants, but most of them serve themselves. Not all of them, but it just seems they get wrapped up in that. Yes, ma'am. How would that be different from just killing an adult? That's where that, that's where it's headed. Is my fear. And then you get the other end of the spectrum and say, "Oh, well, Brother Dean, he's just too much you on society. You're costing us too much money. We, we're going to go ahead and have the doctor." You know, put you down. I mean, that, that's, that's where we're headed. I mean, who would ever dream that we would have went full term? Now, Maryland is trying to go. They call it, so there's prenatal and there's perinatal, I think. So perinatal include it's like the last whatever part of the trimester and 28 days past birth. It's that time. And that's what, they're, that's what the word that they're using. They're not saying, you know, a living baby. They're using that word. But if you look up that word, that's what it means. Just a little bit before the baby's born. To, to uh, basically a month after that it's okay that you kill that baby. And, and that's right here in the United States. You're not going to see that in the mainstream media, but you can look it up. you got to dig, but you'll find it. I tried to look it up today, and I couldn't find one detail. And uh, Brittany, we talked, I think John Fox brought it up this morning, and then Brittany mentioned it, and Brittany sent me the link to it. Very, 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 very sad. Why so what happens? Why they don't have them if they don't kill them? That's a whole other story for sure. Well, at yes, that point, you could adopt. I mean, the baby's already born, right. and they could be adopted out. It's, it, it's a wicked, evil thing. Oh, it is. It is. So a thief in the night. So the Lord's going to come back. So the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, where a lot of stuff bad happens in the night, behind closed doors, where they think they're out of sight and hearing it from everybody, in which the heavens, it says, will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. But both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all things will be dissolved, what, manners, uh, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the, the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens, and, and actually the Bible talks about first, second heaven, um, Whole other story there, but uh, will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, the saved, according to his promise, 
Look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So they're both, both the, 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 the earth and the work. So no matter, and, and I mean, I'm all about being a good steward of, of the land. But all this green stuff is a joke. Most of it. I mean, you know, it, it, right down here in South Louisiana, just, just in the last week or so, in these charging stations, it was a three-hour wait to then get to the station and, and get your 30 minutes it takes to charge your electric vehicle. And guess what's running the charging station? A diesel generator. Yeah. I mean, how goofy. And, 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 and again, I'm, I'm all about it. I mean, I'm a land manager. That's what I do for a living. That, that's what pays my bills. And, and, but, but we're to be good stewards of the land, you know. But, but we're, we're doing things in the name of, but not for. And we're getting really, really out of hand. But, but people are, are falling for these things. And it says, therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, the earth is going to be gone. And there are things that I, I don't know. You know, people have different people have different opinions on it. And I've got a list of scriptures that sure speculate nuclear destruction. But that, that's another whole issue. That's just a personal opinion. I've got five or six scriptures written down. But but you just listen to the, the and this is one of them. You, you listen to the description. The elements will melt with fervent heat. And, and, and it talks about being on fire. The elements will melt again with fervent heat. And... and some, some kind of outlandish stuff there, crazy to think about, but that you think about the reaction to some of the, the war, wartime things that we have. Are you really ready, the question there, for the world as you know it to end? Are you ready for the earth to be renovated by fire and for all human works and, and unrighteousness people to be destroyed? The works and the people that are unrighteous, they don't know the Lord, they're going to be destroyed. Are we living? Like we believe that. We don't know when that's going to be. I mean, you know, the, what, what do you think uh, Ukraine is so important for? Guess what it's under? Is it, It's uranium, I think, right? That it, it's really important to nuclear power and things like that. It is filthy, rich, eat up with it. Yeah. And, 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 you know, there's some other nations that have been a little fighting over and real quiet about the reasons and why. And, and the, the nuclear power is a big, big, big thing. So, uh, just a couple of notes I want to read to go with that. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 10 through 11. That we just read there. So Christ's second coming will be sudden and terrible for those who do not believe in Him. But if we're morally clean, spiritually clean, spiritually alert, saved, it won't come as a surprise to us because we're going to be ready. You know when Jesus told the disciples to, hey, wait here and pray. Just a little, I don't know how much time it was, but uh, it'd be what days, I don't think. But, and he come back, what was they doing? Like any good Christian, taking a nap. When they should have been watching and praying, he says, hey, wait here, watch it. Because he, he's like, he's basically saying, look, you guys need to have my back for a minute. I need to get over here in some long time. I need you to be watching and I need you to be praying. And, and you know, I don't know who all was there, but I guess James looked at John and said, look, I'll take first watch. You go ahead and take a nap. He's like, all right, in five minutes they're both asleep. You know, that's that's how we are a lot of times. Y'all y'all will see what I see from the pulpit up here. That happens in church. I think I, I think some husband and wife say, Hey, you go ahead and nap the first twenty minutes and I'll nap the next twenty. And then we tell each other what happened in church. It must be just being silly, but you know, we, we need to be ready. Realizing again the earth is going to be burned up. That is what the scripture says. People say, Oh, that's crazy talk and all that stuff. That's what the Bible says. It's going to be burned up. And, and I mean, you think of, of, of silver and, and gold, all these different type metals. How are they purified? Fire. Put it under extreme, intense, or as the scripture says, fervent heat. All the impurities come out. They're gone. And what's left is purity. That, that's, that's the relation, you know, physically versus spiritually. The, the, the Lord's going to, going to clean things up. I mean, he describes a new heaven, new earth. And, and it's talked about in the scripture. John describes that. So again, realize it's going to be burned up. We should put our confidence in what is lasting and eternal and not be bound to earth and its treasures or pursuits. Do not spend more of your time piling up possessions or striving to develop. We need to be striving to develop Christ-like character. That's what we need to be striving for. God's purpose for mankind is not destruction, but He's going to, it's kind of a recreation. He's going to make everything new. He'll purify the heavens and the earth with fire and He will create them new. We, we can joyously look forward to the re restoration of God's work. 
if, if we're saved, we should not become lazy and complacent because Christ has not yet returned. Instead, our lives should express our eager expectation of his coming. What would you like to be doing when Christ returns in, in the way that you're, you're living each day? Or, you know, or, or like I've shared this with y'all two or three times probably, you know, Brother Van Denman over there, he said, I want to die with sweat on my brow serving somebody. And he did. Um, what do we want to be doing? Yeah, I can remember, you know, Brother Brad, you know, just last, boy, he was witnessing every, every, anybody who walked in them rooms. And Brother Clarence, he ain't here now, but you know, he was doing it over there, not knowing what was going to happen. With, I mean, he lost a whole lot of blood. Um, but but what, what are we doing? So just a few questions for you to think about. Do you live like you even believe in Christ? We say we do. But does our life's choices, does, does the things that we embrace, do the places we go, do the things that we say, do those things show that we believe in Christ? Do you know that you're ready? You know, that will say, you know, never know, the Lord may come back tomorrow. That's true. He might. He might, you know. Uh, and, and do you strive to lead others to Christ? Or do you really not worry about that? Does your life support your talk? Does your life support your talk? And, and, and you know, the, the, the Lord knows. But what do others think? The Lord knows. But what do others think? And, and when, when they, they think about us and, and a lot of a lot of Christians, you know, they, they just I know how he really is. I know how she really is. And that's very unfortunate that, that there's things in our lives that point away from our salvation rather than to our salvation. So if a person truly believes, top of page 85 there. If a person truly believes that all human accomplishments will be burned up in the judgment of God. How might a person, how might that person's perspective change regarding work? So, so if we truly believe, so all your trophies, all your certificates of participation, certificates of achievement, all your homes, all your fancy titles, your big old bank account, or your little, whatever, it's all going to be burned up. Every single bit of it. Going to be burned up according to the scripture. So, so why do we put so much of our physical, our mental, our, our financial, all in these things that have no eternal value? Some of them won't even make a decade. And people ain't going to know it ever existed. Yet we will put so much in that. And, and, and literally, you know, I, I, and I know I talk about sports a lot because it's a big thing. The churches are battling with sports. Every pastor I talk to, that is a concern. And, and, and people will, I mean, they can't sit through a 30 minute sermon, but they can play three back to back ball games and cheering like the Dickens. And then if we go into overtime, I mean, I'm literally, I, I mean, this is how it is on a Sunday morning. I'm seeing this morning, I preached till about nine after. And I'm thinking, oh, somebody's going to be upset, I guarantee you. But I ain't finished. So I just wasn't that worried about it. I try, I strive to be through by noon, but Brother Clarence, it just don't work out sometimes. I had a couple more points to hit. But but that but that's how we are. That's how we are. I mean, we can't wait to get out to go spend hours doing stuff. I mean, I can sit all day in a deer stand. There's gotta be a box stand with a nice comfortable chair now. I can't sit there with my legs hanging anymore. That don't work. I used to do that all day. Not even get down. Just go up there, take me a sandwich, and a big bottle. And I can sit there all day. But we just don't put much stuff, much stock in the Lord. You know, I, I, I'd sure love to see the desire to serve the Lord in a mightier and more active way in our church. You know, we, we talk about, you know, Brother, Brother Clarence and I talked about, you know, our concerns with our, our, our children's program. A lot of our leaders ain't really sold out. And maybe I hurt your feelings, but I'm just it's just what I see. I mean, they come in just, and I know you, you, you have class, you got held up and all that, but it's getting very common. Get here just in time. Get here 10 minutes after Sunday school has started, or should have started. we got to quit doing those things. What is important? What is really important? Showing and teaching and, and loving our kids to Christ. Or... 
Come on. We've got to get there. You know, that, that's how we are. I'd love to see so much des more desire to serve the Lord because we get to serve the Lord, not because Brother Clarence is going to say something to me if I'm 10 minutes late again. Or if I don't show up and I didn't call my backup. And then we get here and nobody knows what's going on and kids are sitting in the room over there. Hey, Brother Jason, where's our teacher? I don't know, baby. That happens. Why are you getting so personal, Brother Jason? Well, because I'm your pastor. I'm supposed to. And we need to do a better job. We need to do a better job with our kids. We need to do a better job with our, our, our Sunday schools. We need to do a better job at, at loving people and, 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 and bringing them. Because I, I told you day one, I'll never grow this church without you. Because it's if you get excited about serving God, coming to church, learning the Word, sharing the Word, until you do, I can just preach till I'm finished. The and ain't, ain't much going to change until the church gets excited about the Lord. And, and, and we, we, we're, not, we're not following the preacher, we're following the Lord. Peter explicitly instructs us how to await the coming of Christ. We're going to read this scripture and we'll, we'll probably stop there. But just go ahead and, and, and set up what we're going to be covering next Sunday night. But he explicitly instructs us how to await the coming of Christ. You know, we're waiting, yet while we're while we're doing his work, though, we don't need to just stop. So if you would, look at 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 to 11. Or if you don't have your Bible, there's probably some in the pews, or it's in your book here too. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious. Uh, King James says, be sober or, or focused and watchful. That means in action. Be doing uh, be, be doing stuff. One of my friends, he told me one time, worked in the plants. And said he had sat down and before he knew it, he had dozed off. And said he was sitting there and had his head down and he just kind of felt, you know, somebody walking up. He said he looked over and, and it was his boss's boots. And he said, I just picked my head up and said, Amen. <laughs> he said, The boss never knew that I was asleep. <laughs> he fell for that. But uh, I think maybe, maybe sometimes that, that's how. Uh, that we are. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious or sober or focused and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent or godlike love for one another. Love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable. That's how some, some people, man, they don't, they don't want you. I, I've been wanting to go visit one of my new neighbors, but I ain't, I ain't caught the gate, the, the chain across the road down yet. Uh, they don't want company. We need to be hospitable to one another without grumbling. <clears throat> a lot of people will serve, but buddy, they're going to grab the whole time. They're going to grumble the whole time. As each one, all of us, have received a gift. You don't think you've got a gift of God? You, you're not looking. I promise you, each and everybody in here has a gift. Most likely, gifts. Yeah. Minister it to one another. Use it, he says. As good stewards, if you've got a good voice, if you just got a decent voice, come on up, sing. You know, we, we serve God, minister to one another. As good stewards, God has given you a gift. A lot of people have a lot of gifts. You know, me, me, Melissa and I, there, there's a country singer that I like, but I don't listen to all of his music. And, 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 and the more I learn, the less I like, you know, because he'll sing one about running the bars and, and sleeping around and all this and that. And then he'll sing one about the name of Jesus. And that, that is bitter water, and that is sweet water coming out of the same mouth. What does yeah. the Bible say? It said ought not to be. Ought not to be. And that God has blessed that person with that talent. And he ain't using it to bless God back. So, you know, a lot of people have a lot of talents, and they don't, you know, a lot, a lot of athletes um, in, in the pros, you know, they have, they have taken an opportunity with that platform to, to there were several in, in the two teams that went to the, the Super Bowl. They were strong Christian people. You know, that cup, the receiver for Los Angeles, very outspoken about his faith in Christ. Very outspoken. And, and he, he said more than once, to, to, to serve God is way more important than what I do in this football, but I'm going to use it as my platform. There were a couple of others in there too, so really outspoken Christian folks. So uh, without grumbling, as each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards 
of the manifold, the, the grace of God, much grace he has. If anyone speaks, let him speak of, as the oracles of God, as a refer, reference to, to preaching. If anyone ministers, you know, opportunities to serve, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. That in all things God may be glorified through Christ Jesus, through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So be glorified through, through Jesus Christ so that he, He's in us and He should be glorified through us. And we should do these things. You know, we should be willing to serve. We should be hospitable. We should, be, we should do it without, without fussing about it. I mean, God said, what kind of, what kind of giver does he, does he want us to be? What's the Scripture say? Cheerful. Cheerful. So we're, we, while we're waiting, we need to be working. We need to be serving. We need to be doing the kingdom work. Is what we need to be doing. So we're going to stop right there and give y'all. Y'all get to the night off early. Because if, if I dive into the rest, I'll, I won't want to stop. So good stopping point right here. We'll, we'll get back in and break this set of scriptures that we just read down. And go in a little bit deeper in, uh, next Sunday night. So any last thoughts or comments? All right. I almost said, can we get a motion to dismiss? <laughs> if y'all would stand. And... Brother Clarence, would you close this, please?